In 2015, Microsoft released an update that allowed the Xbox 360 to use USB storage devices up to 2 terabytes in size. Right around that time, I published a video that explained how I took advantage of this update to consolidate storage on my system. That video is still the most viewed video I've published, and I still get a lot of questions on it to this day. This video is going to answer a lot of those frequently asked questions. Before we get right into it, I want to let you know I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers on my channel. If you end up liking this video, do me a favor and let me know by either sharing, hitting that like button. Really appreciate it. It will help more people find this video. Okay, so first up, I get asked a lot which models of the Xbox 360 can take advantage of this, and the answer is all of them. It doesn't matter if you have a launch console or the most recent revision, they can all use external storage up to 2 terabytes. Next, will Microsoft ever release an update that will allow you to use more storage space, like 4 terabytes? And the answer to that is very likely not. There are technical reasons why the limit is 2 terabytes, it's not arbitrary and it currently wouldn't be in Microsoft's best interest to focus more resources on the Xbox 360 than they need to. Alright, so what about games that say they require an internal hard drive on the cover, such as Destiny or Battlefield 4? The answer is you still need an internal hard drive in that case. A USB hard drive is considered a USB storage device by the Xbox, and if a game says an internal hard drive is required, it will be looking specifically for an internal hard drive to work. If I install a disk-based game onto the USB hard drive or flash device, do I still need a disk in the drive in order to play it? The answer is yes, the disk acts as a licensing key and is required for playing the game. And I also get asked, what if I have a modified console, JTAG, or any other modification? Do I still need the disks in the drive then? My answer there is it's kind of outside the scope of these videos. I'm exploring the official update released by Microsoft and not unofficial modifications. So what if you have a USB hard drive and you want to use it for your Xbox, but you also want to use it for something else? You still can. When the Xbox formats the drive for its use, it actually just formats it with the FAT32 file system and creates some hidden folders on it to store the Xbox content. If you wanted to, you could connect it to a PC and use it for something else as well. There's nothing preventing that. Okay, so on to some troubleshooting. I've gotten a lot of questions from people saying they've connected a drive to their Xbox 360 and the 360 does not find it. So there are a few things I can think of that might be preventing the Xbox from seeing the drive. The first is if the drive is larger than two terabytes. I honestly, I don't know what the Xbox will do. I don't have a drive larger than two terabytes to try it out with. Another thing I can think of is that if the drive is formatted with a file system that the Xbox doesn't recognize, say a Linux file system, it may not recognize the drive. If that's the case, connect it to a computer that can format the drive as either NTFS or FAT32, format it there first, and then try connecting it to your Xbox. The other thing I can think of is that the Xbox can still only support two connected USB drives at one time. So if you have multiple USB storage drives on your Xbox, try just connecting those first and then connect your new drive. So let's talk about USB drive performance. I often get asked, what type of drive should I buy for my Xbox? Does it matter if it's USB 2, USB 3? Should I get a 7200 RPM hard drive? Should I get flash? So here's the deal. The Xbox 360's USB ports are USB 2. If you're looking at a new USB drive at this point, most of them are going to be USB 3. USB 3 is backwards compatible with USB 2, that means you'll be able to use it no problem on your Xbox, you just won't be able to get the speed improvements that USB 3 offers over 2. If you're in the market for a hard drive over flash, let's say, what should you get? A 7200 RPM drive? 5400 RPM drive? So according to some performance numbers I looked up on the web, you can expect a 5400 RPM drive to have a read speed of about 100 megabytes a second. The real bottleneck here is going to be the Xbox's USB 2 interface. USB 2's max transfer speed is 480 megabits a second. Now remember that's megabits, not megabytes. There are 8 bits in a byte, so that's about 60 megabytes a second. The thing is that there's overhead there in the USB protocol, and realistically you can expect about 30 megabytes a second when reading from a USB 2 drive. So given that, a faster spinning hard drive is not going to give you any real performance gains over a smaller, more portable drive. I'd actually recommend a smaller, more portable drive anyways, as most of those don't require an external power supply. So that covers a bit on hard drive performance over USB, but I also get asked, hey, what's faster, the internal hard drive, a USB hard drive, or what about a USB flash drive? So I decided to run a few tests, and here's what I did. I decided to take the older game Dust and start it from a USB hard drive 
the Xbox internal hard drive, and a USB flash device. Before starting each game, I made sure that the Xbox was turned off and turned back on so it would have a clean boot. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything cached in memory after exiting the game that might improve the performance startup the next time around. I recorded how long it took to load my save game from a USB flash drive. In all three cases, the save was on the same drive. It was the game itself that was in a different location. You're looking at the results of those tests right now. You can see that out of all of these, loading from the USB flash drive was the fastest. Keep in mind, I only tried this with one USB flash drive and one USB hard drive. There are multiple factors involved here. Different games or different hardware might have a different result. But from this small amount of data, what would I suggest? Well, if money wasn't a factor, I'd say buy two terabyte USB flash drive and connect it to your Xbox. However, right now those are really expensive and not very cost effective. If you were looking at buying a new storage device for your Xbox 360 today, I'd still recommend buying a portable USB hard drive. You still get the best bang for the buck in terms of storage to cost there. So thanks for sticking around to the end of the video and I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you thought. Hopefully this helps keep some life into your Xbox 360.